Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play The Binding of Isaac. We're continuing our run from last time, where we played as Magdalene. We're in the depths, so we know we're getting pretty close to the end, but this is about the part in the game where things start to get pretty difficult. Well, we can't reach that soul heart. Oh, and look, we have the arena, the store, and the treasure room all right here. But we've only got one key. Well, there's our second key. What luck. Well, let's start with the treasure room. Oh, that's uh, not a bad item. Not very helpful in this game, but... Splunker Hat. The Splunker Hat allows you to see where secret rooms are when you enter a room. But the treasure map already tells us where the secret room is, so it's not all that helpful. And our prize is a heart. We should probably open this door. Hmm. Well, there's no reason to buy either Mr. Boom or Steam Sale. We're late enough in the game that Steam Sale isn't going to be helpful, and we already have the doctor's remote, so Mr. Boom isn't that good. And we don't need to use the slot machine in the secret room, so we'll leave that for later. Alright, well, how about a chance to show off the doctor's remote again? That was pretty. A penny and a heart for our trouble. I hate these rooms. But they can be fun. Alright, a beggar. That's a good use of our money. Alright, a battery. The battery allows you to charge your spacebar weapon while fighting. Up to three dots per battle. So if we were to drag this battle out for a while, we could recharge the doctor's remote right here. But there's really no reason to do that, because the Doctor's Remote will be fully charged after this battle. Taking out these Knights and Dyke Corridors is, uh, a little time-consuming. Oh, great, a room full of these bleedy pustule things. Well, there's a blue rock in the corner, so let's see if we can kill one of them and blow up that rock using the remote. Well, we got a key out of the deal. Pretty good. Alright, this room again. Seven cents and a bomb. Not bad. Rather than go fight the boss, let's explore the floor a little more. Health. Just what we needed. Well, let's see what's in here. Another chest. We traded a key for a bomb and three cents. Not a bad deal. Rooms like this can be difficult at first. You don't have a lot of room to maneuver and... Well, that means it's hard to take out the enemies, which means it's hard to get room to maneuver. That heart would be nice, but let's take out the mini-boss first. 
and our mini boss is Lust. Lust isn't really that hard to kill, she just runs straight after you and tries to hit you. When she dies, she often drops the virus. The virus gives us a poison touch. When we touch an enemy, we deal a bunch of damage and poison them. Before we take on the boss, I want to top off our health real quick with some stuff we left behind. Alright, Monstro 2. You remember him from last time, he really hasn't changed. This fight might take a little while longer though, because we don't really have a good item to kill him with. So instead, we'll exploit a glitch in his AI. Well, I got Harry for a second. But we're in pretty good shape as we prepare to head down to Depths 2. I don't think there's a whole lot left for us to do on this floor, so let's head down. Well, we started near the secret room, so let's head there right away. Let's see if we can blow open the secret room using one of those exploding flies. There we go. Well, a bomb and a heart, that's worth it. More money that we really don't have much use for right now, but we'll take it. This is a really good time to point out the one downside to the doctor's remote. When you use it, you can't shoot while you're aiming the crosshairs. Not very helpful against enemies like this. Well, it's Sloth. It's a pretty easy kill. We'll just walk back and forth and spit those larvae at us. And occasionally a big old green bomb. Like that. Pretty easy. The Hierophant is a pretty nice card. When used, it spawns two soul hearts. Sometimes when you know you're about to get hit, and you have Poison Touch, it makes sense to just run straight at the enemies and abuse your invincibility frames. Try to get a couple of kills while you can. Well, let's keep exploring the floor. Nothing much here but a slot machine. Oh, we got lucky there. One of the uh, spiky sliders killed an enemy for us. This looks like a good chance to use the doctor's remote. Maybe not. Alright. That was a dumb way to get hit. Oh well, jeez. Still have a full health pill at least. And our last treasure is... Roid Rage. 
Speed plus range. Not bad. We've also unlocked the common cold for collecting the virus and roid rage in a single playthrough. Oops, this isn't good. Anyway, there's still more to explore on this floor. Before we head into the store, though, I want to check out what's in this chest. Ugh, seriously, that was a dumb move. At least we got our health back. Alright, well, let's see what's over here real quick. Alright, uh, the belt. That gives us a speed up. I suppose we should check the store out now. Wow, lucky us. The 9 volt is a good item. It reduces the minimum charge level of all spacebar items to 2. And he was selling a health up pill. We could tell by the color we've already encountered one like that way back in the basement. This isn't good. These guys are hard enough to dodge, and there really isn't a whole lot of room to maneuver here. Not good. Alright, I have to use the pill or we might die. Well, we already have enough bombs for right now, so there's no reason to gamble. Hmm, that was a pretty lucky rocket. Alright, last time this was the final boss. Let's do it again. All in all, this fight isn't really too difficult. You just have to make sure you don't get hit by the mobs, and uh, stay near the center of the screen. If you can get Mom to stomp on one of her other body parts, like that, the fight can end much faster. It's a little hard to use uh, the doctor's remote here. There we go. And look at that, a trap door down. Well, if the uh, between level map wasn't enough to tip you off, there's more. Let's head on down to the womb. Welcome to the womb. This place is completely terrible. This room is an example of an average room in the womb. It's usually full of extremely difficult enemies. Power-ups drop very rarely. And in the womb, you can't take anything less than one heart of damage from anything. And wait, it gets worse. In the womb, there are no more stores or treasure rooms. We're on our own. The only thing we're guaranteed is a boss room and a secret room. The best thing that could happen to us down here is maybe an arcade or a beggar. So our plan is essentially run straight for the boss and try to end the game before we die. And this is a new enemy, it mirrors your movements. You'll notice the spikes in the corner. If we could get into that corner, we could get it to kill himself. We'd need to waste a bomb, so instead we'll just use our attack fly. Not a hard fight, just tedious. That was a close call. Ah! 
Well, that was worth our time. The sun is a great card. It fully restores our health, damages all enemies in the room, and reveals the entire map. Well, we got back a little of the health we lost there. Oh, and this is a nice, easy room. Just have to take out these rolling guts. And stand in the corner. Well, entering this room pretty much told us where the boss has to be. He has to be at the end of the branch to the north here. Well, that was a dumb way to get hit. This looks kind of tricky, but it's really not. All we have to do is stand above it and shoot down. Well, attack fly comes in handy sometimes, doesn't it? That was honestly one of the more forgiving rooms so far. A new pill. Let's see what PhD identifies it as. Speed up. Well, we could still use a little speed, why not? These mole-like enemies are unique to the womb. Whenever there's cover in a room, like a rock, They'll generally try to hide behind it, and then wait for you to come and try and hit them, then take a pot shot at you. This behavior makes them one of the more annoying, but I wouldn't say dangerous, enemies that you'll encounter in the womb. That was a very dumb move. Well, I hated to have to do that, but the sun did just save our lives, probably. Oh well. Time to take out the boss. The Fallen is one of the more difficult bosses of the game. He has a fairly simple pattern. He fires three shots, then four and chases you around the room. Then fires a four-way cross and repeats. Despite the simplicity in his pattern, it can get a little hectic. His first form isn't bad, though. It would help if I could actually hit him, though. And this is where the fight can get a little hairy. You'll notice that they aren't in sync in their attack cycle. This can make it a little difficult to dodge when you have to keep track of not only where they are in the room, but at what phase in their attack cycle they're in. All right, some health. And a treasure, I guess. The Ouija board gives us spectral tears that can penetrate rocks, but not enemies. Well, let's head on down. According to the between level map, we're at the end. This is the final stage. These eyeballs can be a little annoying. They have a instant hit attack like that, so you have to keep moving whenever they're about to hit you. Here's an example of spectral tears. We were able to shoot them right through the rock. This is not good. We're kind of low on health for this room. Oh, not good. Well, I guess that's the end of the line.
map of heart and we're stuck in the... Hey, uh, soul heart. I guess we're not screwed yet. Well, we know the boss isn't up there. Hmm. Well, let's get into that corner first. I'll get rid of those rocks. Wait, why did I do that? Now I have nowhere to hide. Even though we know the boss isn't down here, we're still going to take a look real quick. At this point, we're so low on health that even if we found the boss, I'm not sure we could win. Well, nothing from that room. That was too close. That was lucky, too. Whew. Wow, lucky again. Alright, well, we know the boss isn't above us or to the right, so there's only four rooms it could be in. That's pretty good. And with any luck, the secret room coming up will have something in it that could save us. Alright, an arcade. I guess we're not done for yet. All we gotta do is not die here. I really should not be that close to these guys. That's that's pretty stupid. There. All right. Hi, ah, a yeah, soul heart at the entrance. Well, let's gamble away this money because it's not doing us any good. Scottle. That does make the shell game guy disappear, but it's a nice power-up. Fly love means that all flies are now friendly to us. While we were gambling, we also got a full health pill. Oops. Not good. Uh-oh. Jeez. I hate those eyeballs. Now well, let's see what's in the secret room. Well, we've still got some money left, so... I'll just gamble it all away. You know, that would have been useful, you know, a while ago. I, you know what, I'll take it. There's no real point to it, but why not? Well, this is it. Nothing left to do but kill the final boss. Here we go. Mom's heart is similar to the previous mom fight. She mostly just spawns enemies to try and kill us. She is a little harder in that we can't get her to kill herself by stomping on a body part, but she doesn't move. And she always spawns her mooks in the same spot. So with a healthy supply of bombs like ours, it's pretty simple to just spam bombs at the center and hope that they kill her enemies as they spawn. The bombs also do a pretty good amount of damage to Mom's heart. Yeah. 
All right, and when Mom's heart gets near the end, she begins to wig out and doesn't hide anymore. She'll just constantly spawn enemies and throw bombs all over the room. Well, we did it for real this time. We killed Mom. Let's see what our prize is. Well, we unlocked some new things. For our first real mom kill, we unlocked Judas. And for unlocking Judas, we unlocked the Book of Belial. And for completing the game as Maggie, we've unlocked the Relic. I think that's enough for now. I'll see you guys next time.